Oh, we are live. Looks like we're live. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Paul with PicoPros.com, and this is uh, the latest episode of Pico Prospectives. This is the podcast we do in conjunction with AV Nation. Uh, that's avnation.tv. They have a wide range of podcasts on their network. Uh, talks all kinds of things related to audiovisual equipment, installations, that kind of thing. So be sure to check them out. Again, this is Pico Perspectives. We specialize in the ultra portable and Pico projection space. Uh, all the gadgets and related technologies therein, whether it's audiovisual related to small portable projection. Uh, I am Paul Mardansky. I am co-founder and co-host of Pico Perspectives. Uh, this is Rich. Yeah, I'm Rich Margansky, the web developer and also co-founder of Pico Pros. Right, and uh, today we have a very, very exciting show for everyone. Uh, sorry for the delays for those that were waiting for the last hour or so, uh, but we're live now and we have our guest and we're all set to go. So uh, our guest today is a very special guest, Peter Cha of Celluon. Peter, welcome to the show. I thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, guys. Uh, Peter, can you just give them? We're going to switch gears in a second. Can you just tell them who you are with Celluon? So I'm Peter. Uh, I'm working in business development, so trying to do a lot of the marketing as well. So you know, reached out to you guys to see if we can get a little of your help, and as well as other media outlets, and then working uh, with customers as well. Perfect. And what, we're going to get all into Celluon and the the exciting products you guys are coming out with very soon and the exciting products that you actually currently have out on the market. Uh, pretty amazing technology. Uh, but before we get into uh, Sell You On and their new products, uh, I'm actually going to throw it over to Rich. Uh, we saw a lot of interesting information from CES and just in the last week there was some really cool news. Yeah, so, uh, so let's kick it off with the news. Um, got a couple cool things happening. New Year, Happy New Year everybody. Um, so one of the cool things that we would like to talk about is a partnership that was just signed with Cindian and a company called Quanta Computer, uh, and that's basically their name. Uh, so they're, they're forming a partnership, or they're, they're teaming up to develop a what is a, uh, and i got to read this, this is a long name, a near-eye L-cost-based micro-display technology. So something similar to a Google Glass type of technology projection system. system. Yeah. So Quanta is going to, it sounds like the, there's a, press release on this. It came out the first week of January. Uh, Quanta, is, is, they develop many, many different uh, electronic uh, pieces of equipment. They're the largest manufacturer of notebook computers in the world. They're huge. Um, I had never heard of them before, uh, you know, January, uh, before that I found out they con they're connected with Cindian, but they're giant. So they're actually using, they're teaming up with Cindian again, taking advantage of uh, Cindian's uh, LCOS engine that they have, and they're developing some kind of a wearable system that is going to be basically like a mono, uh, monocular, monocular uh, type of glass system. So there will be a Cindian engine inside this piece of glass, I guess. I, I don't know exactly what the, I should be calling it. Right now, it's but like an optical relay, I imagine, much like uh, Google Glass is kind of clear piece of plastic or glass right in front of your, I assume, right eye. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think so. There's no real information. It's just something that it's really all it is is that point. they're they're yeah they're in the works of, to develop this thing. So it's a really cool partnership. Uh, one of the one of the things that I'm interested in is the partnership of it is that Quanta Quanta is so large. Uh, again. Biggest, world's largest biggest uh, manufacturer of notebook computers. They anticipate or they're planning to uh, really ramp up their wearable tech, uh, develop a lot of new wearable type of things, which is the, ne the next wave of computing, a lot of people say. Um, a lot of our customers in involve Apple, um, HP, and another cool t uh, note is that, or a tip or rumor, is that. They are rumored to be the uh, sole manufacturer of the iWatch. Um, so it looks like they're going to be doing manufacturing for the iWatch. Yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, uh, I'd like to jump back, if you don't mind, to yeah. Cindian. Because uh, I, I don't know, some of our viewers may or may not be familiar with Cindian. So they do the LCOS Pico projection engines. Uh, they have been historically in a number of products by AXA Technologies and similar type companies. Uh, so it's a lower cost uh, 
uh, type power. of display engine because uh, manufacturing capacity for LCOS panels is, uh, you know, there's a lot of capacity, so they can make them real cheap. Uh, low but, cost, low power. Yep. Right. So, so this this engine right here, it was a 720p engine. I don't know. Did you yeah, mention that? Yeah, 720p engine. Um, essentially, the type of display that you're going to get if you do in, integrate this technology into a wearable type of eye system, near eye system, you get the equivalent of a 46 in, inch image in in your near field of vision um, if you were staying four, uh, about three meters away from that 46 inch diagonal image. Um, so really cool, yeah, H720, uh, 720p HD uh, quality. And uh, this isn't a new type of engine. Um, they actually, Cindy actually had this come out. They announced they're developing this a couple of years ago, 2012. Uh, it's just starting to gain traction, which is really cool. Uh, but I'm interested in it because, um, you know, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because it's it deals with wearables. And I think wearables are, they're interesting. I think um, that, yeah, I... I, don't, I, I like your word, use of the word interesting because yeah. I'm not sold on the watch, on the glasses especially. Not, yeah. I can't imagine having something on my face, not at this point, in this form factor. I think maybe if it's like a pair of glasses, more like glasses or yeah, sun, uh, you know, sunglasses, sure. Yeah, it, it's like... Uh, it's intrusive right now. Yeah, I mean, we, when, if, when cell phones first came out, they were mm -hmm. massive. I mean, yeah. they were size of a wine bottle. <laughs> um, giant. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, obviously, but, you know, they're oh, large, the suitcase clunky, on the motor they actually were plugged into your phone. Yeah, or, yeah. I'm sorry, plugged into your car. Oh, that one, too, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so you're saying miniaturization, we'd be able to get to these spectacles <laughs> that... I've seen renderings that look like that. I'd like to see it happen. I might but, wear them then, but I think we're talking five years ago. Anyway, Cindy and Quanta partnering up to build some kind of near-eye wearable device. That's cool. And uh, it'd be interesting to see how far it goes into the wearable field. Maybe they'll do it for like a, sm a projector inside a watch or some other wearable. It'd be nice if battery life yeah. gets there. But, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be low-powered. Uh, yeah, we'll see. It's an interesting... Area of yeah, technology, cool. so, but cool. uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have for that. <laughs> all right, well, switch gears. Uh, so, coming out of CES, another interesting uh, set of technologies. Uh, DLP right now, the current uh, premium brand, if you will, the largest brand in the portable and Pico projection space uh, by far at this point. Um, so DLP, they had a you know a booth at CES, obviously, and right now they're showing. Um, if you're looking at the video podcast, uh, um, you know, the DLP website here. And so what they showed, uh, they showed a few interesting things. Not They, they called it using their Pico technology, although there were slightly larger installations than we've seen from DLP in the past. Uh, but nonetheless, one of the more interesting things uh, was the HP Sprout. So this is more or less, it's about $1,900. It's a, a system that actually is like projects from overhead onto a surface, and it actually augments your... Um, uh, your experience. So it can actually, you can place objects, whether it's a cell phone, a piece of fruit, whatever it is, it depends on what you're doing with it. You can actually use 3D scanning to scan what's on that surface and then you can remove those items or whatever and it'll actually project a digital rendering of what you just scanned and you can manipulate it by like pinch and zoom, all these different things. And so it could be used for, you know, education or business, potentially retail <laughs> opportunities, that kind of thing. Um, actually, uh, is that related to the smart kitchen? It's a, Have you it's, seen those? I've seen uh, Intel has something, and there's a couple of very similar things, a very similar idea. That is neat, where you actually have an interactive uh, stove, basically, right. or surface, and you place a bowl of uh, whatever, chili or something on the stove, and, and it knows that you're that's yeah. chili, yeah. so it keeps it's, it up to... Uh, you know, certain temperature. Exactly, levels. or like if you put carrots and onion on there, it'll give you recipes that yeah. you can make something with carrots and onion. I mean, it's so like, this is similar. It's to like Jetsons or? kind of stuff, right? Yeah. This, it, is, this is similar to, to that same. It's concept? very very similar. Yeah. Okay. So this is a little bit more compact than some of the other renderings or, or not cool. even render, the other installations we've seen in the past. So yeah, the HP Sprout is actually available for just under two thousand dollars, from what I'm seeing. Again, it'll do 3D scanning. It projects down on the surface. You can interact with the projection, that kind of thing. It's really scanning. I mean, if it's on, I think it's special camera technology. If it so, it's just a set of cameras or one camera on right above. Yeah, I mean, like depth really, sensing cameras, so it'll know. 
Yeah, how does it actually project something underneath them? Well, I mean, detect it. Yeah, I think it only gets so far, but it, it, it it's as if you're looking from above when you have the projected part. So you know if I mean? you have like a box over your... You can't flip it over or anything. It's not full like a box over 360 your scanning. Not olives or right, you can't do yeah. full 360 scanning with this, but... One day will be. One day, sure. <laughs> so another thing DLP showed at the uh, CES was uh, the perch. This is more of a retail uh, kind of system. It uses special projection lighting as well as, uh, you know, 3D sensing capabilities. So the, what they showed at the show at CES was a retail outlet with like showing smartphones or something. It had like four smartphones or whatever it was. And the user picks up one of the smartphones. And what it does is it projects, depend, it knows that you picked up that one product. It'll project all information just about that product on to the retail surface to tell you the specs of that phone, whatever, you know, processor, screen size, resolution, all that. And then you can flip through and get additional information or watch videos of whatever product that you happen to pick up. And then you could, you know, compare and contrast the different products. So it's very similar in a way to the HP Sprout, but it's more designed for a retail outlet. And, yeah, and then again, it does like special projection on, you know, not you know, just to make it more inviting to go up to that retail space, so like special lighting. You kind of know, thing. that's, uh, I, I may be going off topic here a little bit, but uh, <laughs> that right. brings up a good good thought that I had. Um, you, know, you go to a Best Buy or something like that, and uh, they never really have the reviews of anything. Right from the online reviews, right? Exactly. You have to go on your smartphone and do a search yeah. for it, or if they have a QR code, which would be nice, and you're seeing that more and more, scan it and get more information. And we've talked right. about that with some of the image I mean, ammo kind of stuff where you do the QR code and get the... I mean, you just bought a new laptop, right? I just bought a new laptop, yes. Right. Hopefully it's shipped today. <laughs> i got to go home and check out. So if you were at Best Buy, and you, I mean, Best Buy has tons of laptops, right? Yep. And they're all... For somebody that doesn't know a lot about... Laptops, it could be very confusing, and it would actually be pretty cool to take all that information that you get online from the reviews, from the specs, and everything, and bam, put it on the table or something like that. But anyway, that's totally off. <laughs> so this would help you to, uh, you know, obviously c compare in real time without having to use your smartphone or whatever. And so it's really cool. The last thing I want to talk about, so we could get to our guest. I want to make sure we get to our guest. Uh, is the Philips Screenio projector. So this uh, retails for a couple thousand dollars. What this is is, uh, you know, the size of a small portable projector, not Pico. But what it does, it actually projects an ultra short throw image. Uh, it'll project four to like nine feet diagonal image uh, from just a few inches away from the wall. So you can actually put this right against the wall. It'll project a giant image. You won't have worries about having a shadow cast on your projection if you all, walk in all front in of focus, it. Even it's all in focus. It's all in focus. It's all from a small thing. It's actually billed as a television, a screenless television. So I imagine that means you can hook it up to your cable box or your Roku or whatever, project this, and hmm. you know you have an ultra-portable TV that does ultra-short throw. It's pretty cool. Okay. But it's, it's a little pricey at $2,000, but... What kind of TV? No, it, that's the th it's a Philips Screenio. They're billing it as a TV. It's a projector only, no screen. Oh, okay. It's not the same technology as a TV, but in that. No, no, no. It's a projector, oh, okay. but it's ultra short. Okay, through. okay. So I it, thought you just, were talking like they a call CRT it a TV. TV. No, 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 no. <laughs> Without the screen. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's just an ultra short throw projector that. Okay. You know, ultra short throw meaning like literally yeah, yeah, yeah. from a couple inches away you can project this giant thing. We saw similar Super stuff from important. Sony at CES um, where they had a 4K laser based TV where from very short you know distance away from the wall they project I think it was like a 10 foot image or something that was ridiculous. Yeah, but that's a high lumen projector. That's a completely different product than this one. But um, anyway. Uh, so I, I I saw a couple messages saying that certain people weren't able to see the uh, live. Running live successfully because I know certain people are watching it right now. Uh, make sure you go to our Facebook page and click the link on the show. It's facebook.com slash picopros. That'll give you the link, our latest post, to the YouTube site where we're uh, streaming live uh, on AV Nation. So be sure to go there. Um, so I guess that's it for the news segment of the show. Um, so what I want to do is uh, switch it over to our guest. Again, this is Peter Cha of Celluon. Um, Peter, again, thank you for joining us for this uh, podcast. I know we had some delays and technical difficulties, but I appreciate you hanging in there, and uh, welcome to the show. 
Oh, thank you, Paul and Rich. Yeah, and I was the guy. I was fiddling around with my phone because all these tweets were coming out saying we weren't live. So I know. I was trying to get your guys' attention. <laughs> yeah, I, and I yeah, I had a couple people on Twitter, and I saw a couple emails. I was trying to just talk and make sure that we were. Um, and we well, we are according to several people here that I'm getting uh, pinged on. But uh, anyway, thank you once again, Peter. Uh, business development uh, for Sell You On. And uh, Peter, I guess before we get into some of the really exciting products that a lot of our listeners want to get into, and obviously a lot of them care deeply about Pico projection, and that's what we're here to talk about mainly. But could you give us a, a, a history of Sell You On, uh, you know, when it was founded? It, maybe, whoops, you got that right? <laughs> Sorry. All right what, maybe the history of the company when it was founded, what the vision perhaps of the company is. Uh, are you able to provide something like that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so just to touch quickly on it, um, zellion has been around for a little over 10 years now. Um, what we were best known for was our laser projection uh, keyboards. And I do have a yeah. one of them available here. It's a very tiny oh, little well, device that, that projects out a keyboard onto any flat surface, literally the size of, I mean, it fits right in your palm. And so this is what we started out with. We're the company that has this technology patented. Um, projecting a keyboard, you could Bluetooth it to your iPad, your Android devices, even Windows, um, things like that. And so we've been doing this for quite a while, and we just decided to uh, enter into the Pico projector uh, market just recently, and um, been working hard on this for almost a year now, uh, in close conjunction with Microvision. Okay. And they had us as a partner to be one of the probably the first uh, to manufacture. A projector based off of their Pico P technology. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I, I was reading that you guys were tied with Microvision's technology. Um, so you've been working with them for what about a year? You said. Um, so how how does something like that come about? I mean, you know, so your business you're doing well. You're selling laser-based keyboards. I know you also have the Evo mouse. I don't know, uh, you know, the success of that, but I, I know you do have it as a product. So you're all about making maybe business productivity wireless, let's say, or making, you know, making your smartphone work, you know, as if it were a, a full-blown computer. That's how I kind of see your guys' uh, company. So that's where, I guess, Pico Projection comes in so that you're not tied to a four- or five-inch screen. You're able to get a four-, five-, six-foot image depending on lighting. Is that the vision for the Pico Projection products? Um, actually, yeah. So for all of our products, uh, the company's vision overall is all about mobility. Yeah. So... Instead of having to carry around a physical keyboard, we'll have a projection keyboard. Same thing with the mouse. Instead of having to carry around a bulky mouse, you can just use your finger to use as a like a touchpad anywhere. Yeah. And the same same goes for our Pico projector as well. You know, you're not really going to be lugging around a monitor. Even you know, a lot of those Pico projectors that are already on the market aren't really you know Pico as you would think of. Um, and so yeah. that's what we're really shooting for as far as our vision. Oh, perfect. So I guess yeah. maybe we'll just jump right into it then, because I'm excited. I know you're excited, Rich. I, maybe I, I know. I think you said you had a, a unit that you could show us, actually. Yes. Yeah. So we do have two products right now. Uh, one is called Pico Air, um, which is a wireless version of it, and we do have one called Pico Pro. Kind of funny how this works out yeah. with you guys. Yeah. With Pico Pros. <laughs> hey, we're we're um, flattered that you like the name. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, and Pico Pro is able to do both a wireless and HDMI hardwire uh, connectivity. And so what I have with me right now is a Pico Air. And if you see on the back side, I want to see if I can show this to you. What's really just back there is, you know, a USB port to charge. It has an internal battery. Lasts about two and a half hours with a Wi-Fi connection. We do have a built-in speaker as well. Um, it's a, it's a one-watt speaker. So if you're in a quiet room, it actually is sufficient. And it is sufficient because there is no fan built into it, so it's silent operations. There's no fan right. having to cool the device. And as you can see, yeah, you know, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, yeah, that's actually a big complaint with a lot of Pico yeah. projectors that, you know, it, the, the fan, the either the speaker's undersized or the fan is too loud or some combination of the two. So a one watt speaker for a small battery powered Pico is actually kind of pushing the envelope. We most of them are about a half a watt. Some have one watt, but then they have the fan that's a lot louder than the speaker. Right? Well, the larger exactly. ones have two watts. So Yeah, even the big ones, maybe they have two one-watt speakers, but those have big fans in them. So, yeah, I th I, I, I'm looking forward. Hopefully we can uh, 
arrange for a review unit. I'm really excited on hearing you know what that sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the one watt speaker with no fan is obviously really it's it's not very big. It's a one watt speaker. You can't really expect you know stereo sound out of it. But it is sufficient, and as you can see with our form factor, this is my phone here with my case on it. Um, if you see the size of it, yeah, it's pretty wow. much almost the same size. Yeah, that's and crazy. So it's very portable, and probably the only Pico projector out on the market right now that will actually fit in your jean pocket. Yeah, that's amazing. So you said that was... Uh that's a Pico Air. Pico Air, two and a half hour runtime with Wi-Fi. That's pretty impressive, actually. A lot of them, you, you know, they could barely eke out an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and that's with no Wi-Fi. So that's a really good, uh, with a smaller speaker, that's a pretty significant uh, and, and the advantage. Pico Pro is about the same size and physically? Yeah, Pico Pro is or? pretty much identical. It's slightly thicker because of the dual connectivity, but, I mean, it's you can't yeah. even notice it. Um, right. But the Pico Pro does last up to three, three and a half hours if you're on HDMI without using the wireless. Oh, okay. So you get a little bit of extra battery life if you use the HDMI connection. Exactly. You don't have to run the wireless. Hmm. So how, what's the technology that you use for the wireless? Uh, so it's Wi-Fi. Um, so our Pico Air and Pico Pro uh, connect via Miracast. And okay. it also has D DLNA capability as well. So for your iOS devices, if you have an app that can stream DLNA, you can connect it uh, wirelessly as well. Okay. That's good That's that you cool. have uh, an option for iOS devices. Uh, yeah, a lot of Absolutely. people have iOS devices, and there's not a lot of devices or projectors out there. there that, yeah, uh, I mean... I mean, Apple's you have very have closed. They yeah. want to They want to control everything. But, so, I mean, yeah, with DLNA, it's it's kind of a workaround around AirPlay, but I, yeah. I it, there's enough apps out there where it's not going to be a pain for anybody. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. and, so, and so Pico Air is kind of geared towards the Android devices since it is mm -hmm. Miracast. And so for the iOS devices, we're kind of marketing the Pico Pro since you can connect it via HDMI. And since DLNA is still not you know, quite there yet, and it is a workaround uh, AirPlay, so we would recommend the Pico Pro for iOS devices. Right. Uh, absolutely. So I think that covers most of the features of the device. So as far as pricing, I, I know it's been – I'll let you speak to it. Cause I'm pretty sure I know the pricing, but if you could just talk about pricing for the products. Uh, so what we've been saying, uh, even during the show at CES, it ranges anywhere between $299 and $450. Uh, $299 for the basic uh, Pico Air, and then all the way up to $450 for Pico Pro, depending on what's bundled with the, uh, with the device whether that's you know Apple's AV adapter for you to be able to connect your HDMI port, okay. um, tripods, stands, et cetera, et cetera. So anywhere between 299 and 350 uh, or 450, sorry, is what you can expect. That's fantastic. I mean, I know uh, at 299 for what you're offering. I mean, that's that's very competitive, um, and uh, especially seeing as you're using a laser light source, uh, I. I We've been following the space for a long time, and anything that involves lasers gets super expensive. You're talking, you know, display engines that are $150 or more. Now, I'm assuming, and we don't have to talk about specifics, but I'm assuming the cost has come down dramatically to enable you guys to offer a laser Pico projector uh, for, you know, starting at $299. That's incredible. Uh, so, congrats on that. Uh, nice work. Thank you. Yeah, and so, like you just mentioned, actually, the laser engine is the biggest cost in the uh, device. Yeah. And so, if it was, if we get that cost down, the price of the product can uh, come down significantly as well. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, so, speaking of the laser engine, I guess um, we didn't actually talk about brightness. I, I mean, I've seen different postings. You, can you talk about resolution and brightness? We didn't even touch on that. Okay. Uh, so Probably our device. <laughs> So our device, uh, as far as the technical specs go, we listed as 30 ANSI lumens. Um, but as it is laser-based, it, it actually is perceived by the human eye to be brighter. And so if yeah. you compare it with other 30 ANSI lumen projectors, you would actually think that ours is a little higher than 30 lumens. But you know, to be technically sound, we do list it as 30 ANSI lumens. Um, yeah. It is There's 720p. There's a lot of debate over that, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know that the, the, the measurement analysis they use for ANSI uh, American National Standards Institute or whatever it stands for. Um, it's a very specific test and it's based on lamp projectors and here we're talking about laser scanning. It's uh, doesn't quite fit. So and it, it's exactly. 
there's marketing and there's a, there's a lot of things, but yeah, it's, I understand why you're saying you have to say 30, but it's perceived brighter. And there's, uh, I forget the effect, what you're saying that the human eye perceives laser light or collimated light as being brighter than it actually is measured, and something Kohl-Ross effect, the HK effect, uh, but yeah, interesting stuff to say the least. Yeah, and so, I mean, even during our show at our booth, it was very, you know, well lit, kind of not a ideal conditions to be, yeah. you know, uh, exhibiting a Pico projector, but even there, a lot of folks were very surprised to see um, just how bright it was, and after we told them it was 30 lumens, you know, they were, it was really hard for them to believe that it was only 30 lumens. Um, as far as the resolution goes, uh, it is 720p HD, and um, we claim to make it, you know, you could project up to 200 inches in a completely dark room. And I personally tested it in our conference room to about 110 inches uh, without losing resolution. And that's when you, you know, turn off all the lights and have the ideal conditions for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it, you do have maintained resolution at over 100 inches. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I saw that on your Twitter feed actually when you did that, um, and yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, generally speaking, pure dark room is kind of hard to come by, to be fair, right? But yes. if you're in a dorm room or a bedroom, something you can certainly get that to, get that to happen. But just say, you know, the fact that you can produce a 110 Im inch image and it's still in focus, I mean, it's pretty amazing. And that's the other thing that we never really touched on is because it's using a laser light source, the image is always in focus. It's not like your camera technology that's autofocus where it's going to hunt for focus. This thing's always going to be crisp and, uh, you know, this the same technology used in the show WX uh, years ago. And same, you know, same idea, you make it bigger, it, it stays in focus. Uh, so it's just one of the advantages of laser light sources for Pico projectors, and we've been talking all along, now that the cost is coming down, you're going to see a lot of OEMs, I think. Yeah, even if you've Adopt Project laser light sources. Sphere. Yeah. It'll all be in focus. Yeah, you can project on curved kind of surfaces. Like map yeah. the sphere out and project something on a on a disco ball. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I mean, I think we're going to see more laser light sources in uh, Pico projections, whether it's Microvision's technology or LCOS or DLP. DLP. I, when I talk to them, they say their customers aren't interested in laser light source. I'm not sure why. That's, that was from a couple of years ago, so maybe it was cost. I'm, I'm assuming it was cost. So mm -hmm. we'll start to see laser light sources make more inroads on, on you know, across the board. I, that's my personal view. But um, So it's good for companies like Osram and these people that sell uh, a lot of lasers or Sora or you know any of these other ones. Um, so uh, very interesting. Uh, yeah. Actually, I, one of the other questions, sorry, I'm jumping around here, but... Uh, <laughs> A lot of our readers are interested in laser safety. A lot of people say, oh, it's a laser. Uh, you know, apparently they think they're going to burn their retinas out or something. I, I, maybe you want to lay people's fears about a laser light source in a projector. Uh, I mean, we're talking fairly low lumens when you compare it to, you know, what they're using in a, a, a you know, military grade. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Can you just maybe touch on, if you can, about laser classification for the product? Yes, so our product is 100% consumer safe. Um, for full disclosure, our laser is a class 3R laser. And so um, but that doesn't mean it's anything dangerous. It's not going to burn your skin or anything like that. Exactly. And with any device, as long as you use it as it was direct as directed and you're not doing anything outside of the limits of what you expect to use the device for, um, it's completely consumer safe. All right, just like a laser pointer, basically, right? If you More dismantle less, the yes. laser, yeah. If you dismantle the the laser pointer, you could do funny things and burn <laughs> things, but uh, that's not what we're here for. So, <laughs> thank you. Exactly. I, I just wanted to ask that question. We get a we get that question a lot when people are talking about your product. So. No, and I I understand. We got that a lot at uh, CES as well. Yeah, exactly. There's a there's a lot of mis uh, misinformation about laser based displays. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess the. Uh, I had a couple other things. I think here. I guess uh, beyond so the Pico Pro and Pico Air launch timing is it still by the end of this month? I mean we're only maybe ten days away or something. Are you still? Yeah, so um, Pico Air we're still shooting for um, the end of January at worst or uh, first week of February is what we're shooting for for Pico Air and Pico Pro will be a little behind that about two to three weeks behind uh, the launch okay. of Pico Air. Okay. 
do you, is there anything like is it production issues or is that it's like stuff you'd rather not talk about or I mean it's nothing major it's not like okay. we're not able to produce it it's mostly okay. uh, working with the retailers you know finalizing okay. the deals getting the stock into their inventory okay et cetera, et cetera. okay so it's a logistics kind of stuff okay so it's nothing yeah. technical so yeah we get those questions too or a lot of people saying oh it's gonna come out Black Friday, you know, this is all speculation. Black Friday, then Christmas. Now, so okay, to lay those fears, it's it's logistics. It's you know, this is the first time you're launching this thing. It's just, I work in a, you know, my day job is new product development in a different industry, and I certainly understand the issues with new product introduction. So, I, if if nobody else, I completely understand bringing a new product to market. So, uh, all right. okay. thanks, Paul. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Actually, since this is your first, uh, this is really your first inter like uh, Pico projector, I guess, right? That you guys are are putting out. Yeah. How long is how long has this been in development for? So we've been uh, working with Microvision for almost a year now. Almost the last CES is about the time frame we start first started working with them. And since mm -hmm. then, you know, we've been uh, developing. And then uh, Microvision's manufacturer of the engine, one of the Fortune 100 global uh, manufacturers, one of the Fortune 100 global firms uh, who manufactures the engine, uh, was you know working with us as well closely. And um, so with that, we had to come up with a design for the actual projector and developing yeah. you know the other technical aspects of the device. Um, so about a year now. It's been about yeah, well, a year. Pretty so, darn quick, actually. I was gonna say that. Yeah, it's uh, that's Im that's impressively quick. <laughs> I would say to come out to for an entire product, and you're already talking to people. Hey, can we get this in your in your retail store? Exactly. And, uh, and they, they were worrying about how to. They get had it. a product at IFA Berlin back in was that October, November? IFA Berlin. Yeah, that's when we first. Oh, September twenty eighth. Yeah, anyway, we sorry. first uh, displayed oh. it. Uh, we kind of try to keep it, you know, quiet. We did have one news outlet that did catch on it, but as far as uh, IFA, we were just, you know, just trying to show the end users to say, hey, yeah. what do you guys think about a product like this? Um, and, uh, and there was definitely a lot of interest, enough for somebody right. to come by and want to take a closer look. Yeah, that, I mean that's so literally nine months of development basically, and you had. You know, and it, let's call it an advanced prototype. I don't know what you would call it, but you had something that was more or less production worthy that they're showing at a trade show. That's amazing. Yeah, a completely new product. Nine months. Yeah, I mean, was this on the is, was something like this on the radar prior to last year, or were you interested That's in a, getting into Pico projection space prior to CES of last year? Yeah. Yeah. So our t our you know our company is all about the projection. You know, we have the projection keyboard. The mouse is a projection of an infrared light to you know right, detect right, motion. Yeah. So we've been into a lot of the projection side of the uh, market, and you know, Pico projector was the next step. And you know, we worked with lasers before with our keyboard, and we felt you know we were confident enough, and we knew what we were doing to be able to manufacture a successful product. And you know, to be honest, we were a little aggressive. We really were shooting for uh, Black Friday and even the Christmas okay. time frame. Um, but with uh, a lot of the technical side, the uh, logistics side, you know, it was a little harder to meet. And so we wanted a more successful launch rather than trying to time it to a specific time period. I wish okay. more companies had that mentality. I swear, a lot of people <laughs> rush things out and they're kind of half baked and they don't work. I, that that's refreshing to hear that you want something that's. Gonna give you know somebody paying three or three hundred and fifty or whatever. If you, well, it's, it's not a ton of money, but it's a, a, enough money to. If you had to wait a month or two more, it's certainly uh, worth it, worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just have uh, I think just a couple more questions, and then maybe we could wrap it up, uh, or maybe if you had anything, Peter. But I just wanted to ask about so. We got the Pico Pro and the Pico Air. They're going to launch in the next, let's just say, two to six weeks or whatever. Um, you know, obviously, you got to see how that is accepted by the industry or, or the market, if you will. And then I, I saw something about, you know, the plans to do a full uh, worldwide launch by the end of 2015. Is there anything you want to mention related to that, or is it too premature, maybe? Sorry, sorry. Kind of cut out in the middle oh, of it, sorry. but I'll see if I could uh, answer based off of what I just heard. But um, as far as our launching, yeah, you know, we want to go global. I think we do have a advantage right now that we are the only company that can 
produce something this slim, you know, this technically sound um, product that has a lot of interest, you know, and I think I kind of mentioned this on Twitter before about how, you know, another company kind of made MP3 players mainstream. And I feel like with what we are doing right now with our product, we really can make Pico Projection uh, mainstream as well. So yeah. we want to be aggressive with our, you know, aggressive but not too aggressive with our expansion and getting our product out there, not just in the United States but worldwide as well. And uh, later on in 2015, we are also working on, you know, higher lumens uh, to be able to, you know, just delay that kind of fear of people saying, oh, that's not bright enough for, you know, everyday use. Oh, so we do have that in the works as well. And, you know, to give, give you guys a sneak peek, we're also looking into trying to do a touch projection as well. So if you project something on a wall, oh, nice. it'll actually oh, recognize I wanted touch. to ask about that because I know that that's a, uh, that's a kind of layered technology on top of what you're doing. Uh, that would be that would be really cool and you'd be the only ones that have a – there's people that have them with styluses or different things but not in this size by any mm -hmm. means. That would be a big differentiator. You'd be on the certainly on the cutting edge yeah, if you were able to pull that off. We start moving forward. We should definitely do another podcast. I'll be first in line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, um, I mean, I keep going back to our, you know, keyboard technology, but, you know, that is a, what – we are really, you know, banking on even for the touch screen uh, Pico projectors as well. Since we do have the experience with perception, you know, 3D perception, right. um, I think our technology and our know-how that uh, will help us you know, further develop that technology for Pico projectors. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I know we want to wrap up here, but so the so something like the Evo mouse um, uses infrared and it in your projection keyboard as well. So could, do you want to maybe talk about what actually senses, is it infrared light that's sensing when you touch the surface to be able to, uh, you know, detect a keystroke? Yeah, so uh, basically it's just infrared light that kind of blankets an area, and so there's a camera that detects when that infrared light is broken. Okay. Um, so that's how it works for the keyboard, uh, yep. and that'll, that'll determine where your location is and what that respective keystroke is. Uh, for the mouse, more or less is the same. It'll detect your movement as you break that infrared light mm -hmm. to be able to control the cursor. You move That's pretty from cool. this location to this location. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I've, I've, I haven't actually personally tested those two products, but I've seen a lot of videos. It's pretty awesome stuff. Cool. So um, I think yeah, we'll Evil the... Mouse was in the running as probably one of the products to compete with our Pico projector to gain attention at our booth. Um, really? We're trying to get a lot of our people to look at the Pico projector, but there was a lot of interest still for the mouse. Huh. Yeah, wow. Wow. I, I was going to ask you actually about your technology roadmap and what, what, you know, beyond Pico Pro and Pico Air, but I think you just actually answered that for me with the higher brightness and uh, touch projection capabilities. Uh, so it's not just a one, you know, one product show. You want to, you know, hit the ground running, be at the front, and innovate quickly. So that's really refreshing to hear. I mean, everybody, you know, they put out products, a lot of the companies, and they're, okay, a little bit, brighter, a little bit higher resolution maybe, a little bit lower cost, maybe an operating system, but nothing revolutionary like touch projection, let's say, on something you know, literally barely bigger than my phone. Yep, so, exactly. And so really we are trying to stuff. stay ahead of it. Yeah, stay ahead of the market and be able to create a lot yeah. of innovative products. Yeah, small and nimble. I love it. Uh, Rich, <laughs> do you have anything else? I, I don't. Uh, I don't have any more questions, but uh, I'd like to thank, uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Peter, thank, thank you. you very much for your time. Peter, do you have anything else, anything that you want, you know, the listeners to know or future listeners if they watch this after, yeah. you know, after it's get published, uh, after it's edited and all that? Do you, anything uh, you want our viewers to know beyond what we've already talked? No, I mean, you know, we pretty much covered everything. Just to, I guess, kind of hit on some of the key points, you know, we do have a very slim form factor projector um, that will just fit in your jean pocket. You know, our Pico Pro will be able to connect wireless as well as a uh, hard wire. Um, we have no fan built into it, so if you're in a quiet room, the internal speaker is sufficient. It is laser-based, and so no matter how close or far you make the image, it's always going to be in focus. And it's different from automatic focus, whereas autofocus, something's going to have to detect to be able to create the image into focus. And the lasers will just keep the image in focus no matter what your distance is from the screen. Um, and I think, you know, we'll get a lot of interest just on that alone. 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is uh, Peter Cha from Celluon. That's C-E-L-L-U-O-N.com. Peter, is there a best way for them to get in contact with your company about product updates, uh, you know, ways to ask technical questions or ultimately buy the product? Is it Celluon.com? Uh, also, Twitter, Facebook, anything like that? Yeah, Twitter. Um, if you guys send us tweets, and I'll, I'll do my best to respond. Uh, okay. Celluon.com will post as much information as we can. We're going to try to run up our Facebook as well um, to continuously throw information out there. But I think Twitter might be the best, you know, most immediate way to uh, yeah. contact us. That's good. So anybody listening, if you, uh, you know, don't, don't bury them, but <laughs> if you uh, have questions about the Pico Pro or Pico Air, uh, be, be sure to reach out to them uh, as well as uh, sellyouon.com. Uh, when they do launch it. Uh, and I, I guess we didn't really touch on retailers, but uh, I know you guys are going to be featured in some retailers as well when these products do launch. Uh, you did kind of allude to it. Um, so I, I'm assuming no names at this point uh, on retailers. Yeah, no official names, but um, a lot of the major ones that you already know of will probably yeah. be there. Okay, that's wonderful to hear. Again, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, this uh, To wrap things up, uh, this, again, uh, this is Paul and Rich with PicoPros.com. Thank you again for joining us with another episode of Pico Perspectives where we talk about Pico projection, portable projection, and all kinds of uh, ancillary devices uh, in the space. Uh, again, this is Peter Chow with Celluon. We look forward to having another show in February. Where we're going to talk about some other interesting stuff. Be sure to follow us on Facebook.com slash PicoPros. Visit us on picopros.com for all the latest in the Pico projection space. Have a good evening, everyone.